AOC is getting criticized today for blocking a small number of users on Twitter. And we found out about this, where you find out about everything these days on Twitter. With Columbia University's Knight First Amendment Institute tweeting out late yesterday, Knight Columbia sent this letter to AOC urging her not to block Twitter users on the basis of viewpoint. You can take a look at that letter if you'd like, available at that link to get their argumentation. We're gonna talk a little bit about it as it's applied in the past to Donald Trump. Uh, in just a little bit, but first I wanted to give AOC's response to that. She tweeted back, I have 5.2 million followers, less than 20 accounts are blocked for ongoing harassment. Zero are my constituents. Harassment is not a viewpoint. Some accounts like the Daily Caller posted fake nude photos of me and abused my comments to spread it. No one is entitled to abuse. People are free to speak whatever classist, racist, false, misogynistic, bigoted comments they'd like. They do not have the right to force others to endure their harassment and abuse. And this is, you know, this is a serious thing. Like this is technology and politics coming together. We have to hash it out. We're gonna have a debate in just a minute. And serious minds online have different perspectives, and they hone in on the important points, including Laura Ingram, who tweeted back fewer than 20 accounts because AOC had written less than 20 accounts, and that's what a host on TV who makes a million or two million dollars a year focused on. No way, she was Well, she makes a lot of money. And she's a very <laughs> serious person, far more respectable than anyone sitting at this table, of course. Uh, AOC responded in exactly the fashion I would have hoped, saying, see, you're a neo-Nazi fan favorite, and I don't block you for defending white supremacist viewpoints and mocking gun violence survivors. Difference of opinion, she didn't <laughs> block her. Good job, AOC. Um, so look, in terms of the legal argument here, and it's cited by Columbia University. Last year, Judge Naomi Rice Buchwald found that Donald Trump's Twitter feed is a public forum. As a result, she ruled that when Mr. Trump or an aide blocked seven plaintiffs from viewing and replying to his posts, he violated the First Amendment. Now, they ruled that it was a violation of the Constitution. There was no injunction to unblock those people. It's been appealed since then, and there are some people that remain blocked. Now, to give you an idea of what we're comparing here, she said that she'd blocked less than 20 people, not based on viewpoint, just based on targeted harassment. In the past, Donald Trump has blocked author Stephen King, votevets.org, a group that represents 500,000 vets and their families. Uh, Marina Sirtis, who played Counselor Troy on Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh No, not Counselor Troy, but she uh, might have been able to help him. Exactly, <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell, uh, friend of the network Jordan Yule, just all these people. He, he, hasn't, blocked, he, hasn't Jordan. Blocked, he blocked Jordan, he blocked sci-fi actors and Jordan, a progressive activist. Yeah. I could have understood if it was a Ferengi, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. hey, she didn't. He didn't want her getting inside his mind. Mm. Oh, mm. that's a good point. Mm. Uh, yeah. He probably does believe that, though. He's like, <laughs> well, let alone if she's operating a windmill yeah. and going to give me cancer. Now you can block a She'll full see the hamsters, Z, but a half. <laughs> no. Anyway, that's got okay. nerdy. So look, uh, that was a. Uh, Wonderfully harsh snapback from AOC to Laura Ingram. Yes, she could have been less harsh, fewer, <laughs> fewer <laughs> harsh. Okay, that's actually less. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's fun. But let's go to the heart of the issue, and it's a difficult issue. And and I'm not positive where I come out on this. So Matt, you have a clear opinion. So let's hash it out and see where we come out. All right. Well, first thing is that the Knight First Amendment Center. They're the ones who did that lawsuit against uh -huh. Donald Trump. They did that. So they actually are fair and going after all politicians for blocking people. They don't want it. And I agree yeah. with them because here's why. One is that you as a federal officer cannot block American citizens because even if they're not you're specifically in your district or whatever, you are a fed, an officer of the country. And if people want to see what you're saying, you can't stop them, and that is true with regard to like if you show up at a town hall. Um, if you're, if you, as long as you're quiet and and reasonably respectful, you cannot be ejected regardless of your viewpoint. Well, um, so that that's exactly and, where the issue is. But, though, but Matt. and I would say no, and it, and that is where the issue because if you look at so inside. Um, so when I was at Salon, I, I used to uh, report on the technology industry um, as well, and there was this raging debate within the tech world of how is it possible to demarcate sane conservatives from Nazis? And it's actually really hard because computers can't do it. They're not, they can't do it. They literally cannot do it. Uh, and, and so 
that's basically this is another manifestation of that problem. Mm. That the far right, like insane um, fascist right, is so crazy, but so adjacent to the Republican right that it's so it this is it just, this issue keeps coming up over and over and over with banning various people and things like that. And and so in the case of like with AOC. If you're posting fake nude photos of somebody on Twitter, that is a violation of Twitter's policies, and mm. that action should be reported. So, uh, well, okay, so let's talk that through, right? So you should get suspended yeah. by, by Twitter for that, not blocked by a politician. Mm. Hmm. Okay. The issue is that Twitter doesn't take much seriously. Well, and, and they're busy. <laughs> I mean, so, and there's a lot of them. So here's what I mean. First of all, it's a really interesting perspective from Matt, who's a former conservative and and and, a, and has been inside that community very deeply, and so understands that mind a little bit. So in terms of the essence of of this issue, look, if you go to the town hall and you have an opposing point of view, great, that's awesome. It's great when progressives do it to conservatives. I don't have any problem with conservatives doing it to progressives. It's a free country, that's the essence of our democracy, no problem at all. I would even say you're loud, no problem, etc. You won't stop talking, okay, but we have to continue the town hall, so there's a limit to that, right? You're abusive, etc. we're gonna throw you out. But that's the thing, have you ever gone on Twitter, right? So there's nonstop abuse, and now, okay, put aside, look, Progressives are way tougher than conservatives. So we can take a lot of abuse and, and we get plenty of abuse. The right wing is insane. Uh, I never block anyone, so I, I, I kind of enjoy the insanity. But like the right wing thinks that I'm on Twitter 24 seven like they are. So they're constantly screaming in this white circular room like, ah, yeah, you're a Muslim, you're overweight, ah, right? <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while, terrible. I do this analogy. I, every once in a while, I, I go in and I see them screaming, and I'm laughing, laughing. And then I go out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they keep screaming, so I don't mind it. And, and I'm sure AOC gets unbelievable abuse. But there is a line mm -hmm. where, you know, I can't be sending pictures of your genitalia. Do I have to endure that if I'm a congressperson or Donald Trump? It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat. One thing is for certain. Of, co of course, the standards should apply to both parties, yes. right? No question about that. And I know that Knight First Amendment Institute is obviously doing this out of principle, and they're uh, applying it both equally to AOC, AOC and Trump, and I respect that. But I don't know where we draw the line because Twitter can't sit there, I don't think, and block every insane right winger. Yeah. And if they did, they would explode. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. but. That's why you have a mute button on Twitter. And that's literally what the judge in that lawsuit was like, look, they got a mute button, push it. Yeah. If you don't wanna see, a, if a guy's being a jerk off, well, push the mute button. Then you don't have yeah. to see it. Yeah, so um, the only issue I have with the Knight Foundation is including in their tweet, uh, based on the basis of viewpoint, which is pure speculation to imply that you know exactly why she banned the 17 people that she did. That's just a needless thing. You have the law on your side, I would rest on that. Don't pretend that you know why she's banning these people. For instance, she cites when fake nude photos of her were monetized by a right wing news outlet yeah. that wanted to tag her in the tweets spreading those photos. Why should she be forced to opt into that? And that's where muting doesn't get the job done. Muting yeah. doesn't stop people from- well, that, and that's So that's a great point, and let me just, can I just build off that real quick? So. And, and that got me thinking, because I was gonna be on Matt's side overall, and I hadn't thought of mute, and that made, that's a really great point. Uh, but, but it actually helps to promote that, that ideology or the fake nude pictures, et cetera, when you tag AOC. So that component is not the same as a town hall. Like if you go to a town hall, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be famous or that that's gonna help. You know what I'm saying? So that using the, the congressperson or the president for publicity Gives it an extra complication. Mm -hmm. So, no, so but again, yeah. But if if you're posting fake nude pictures of somebody, that's a violation. It should be. Yeah, that's a that's a violation. Yeah. But you but the right wing can get away with anything. They, they're they're in the White House press pool. Yeah. <laughs> Those like joke of a of a media site. Uh, and, and Obama had them in the White House press pool. They're like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, sure. I mean, we'll let the right wing get away with yeah. anything. I mean, Just nobody knows that better than yeah. you, Matt. Oh yeah, you're no, right. it's true. And. Oh, well, no, go ahead, I know. Yeah, a couple things. One, first of all, as a country, we have to have a conversation. What is actually a violation of people's First Amendment rights and what is not? Because I've noticed lots of right wingers who say that they're for free speech. Multiple of them have blocked me on Twitter. 
I've literally never tweeted at them. I've never tweeted about them. And yet they've preemptively blocked me before we've ever interacted in any way, which I always find to be a little bit funny. Unfortunately, for a lot of the people and occasionally the people who talk the most about free speech when they mean free speech and when they fight against violations of free speech, what they mean is the uh, stopping their ability to monetize their speech. That's it. That's as far as it goes. It doesn't apply to anyone else. It doesn't apply to non monetary speech. It doesn't mean that they can't talk. It's just they're worried that they well, will stop making money. Well, when they mean free speech, they mean free as in they don't have to pay for it. Yeah, Someone else has to true. pay and for it. No, no criticism uh, whatsoever. No, and, yeah. and, like, no, and, and, and I'm serious, point. that's literally what they think. Yeah, um, I just want to say, if the law comes down that public officials, even on their personal account, can't block people, which is what they said for Trump, then that's fine. Apply it to everyone, apply it to AOC as well. And although unfortunately that forces her to see things like, in Texas it was just ruled that um, sending people uh, non-consensual sexual photos is sexual assault. You can do that on Twitter. So you have to be, you have to obligate these people to be sexually assaulted, which is really weird. Um, but I will say too, I don't care if Donald Trump blocks anyone. I really don't. It, I don't. I know that it's. I, I know that it's technically philosophically against the freedom of speech. They should have access to those tweets. Um, and it doesn't mean that my values don't actually go against him doing that. I just. It's far down the list of priorities. I yeah. will say that. I hear you. I have a ruling. Um, so first, a, a fun point. Uh, as far as I know, I've only been blocked by two people: uh, Howard Dean and Howard well-known Dean. free speech advocate Candace Owens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed Seb Gorka. <laughs> Never tweeted yeah. at this person. <laughs> I've been on his radio show, so I'm definitely not blocked. Uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, the ruling is um, hit the mute button uh, and don't block them. Uh, so that applies to Trump, that applies to AOC. Yes, they get to publicize their things a little bit by writing on your coattails, but that's the price we pay for public officials uh, protecting the First Amendment. So I, I, I'm gonna agree with the courts here tonight, First Amendment and, and Matt. Uh, and, and let's also note one final great point, which is that about a year ago, if we I had told you uh, that AOC was going to defeat one of the most powerful Democrats in the country, and then was going to be so popular that right wingers would sue her if she d- blocked them on Twitter, mm-hmm. saying, "Well, I can't, my rights have been violated." If the legendary Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won't listen to me. Mm -hmm. Oh My God, how much have we changed the world in about a year? So enjoy that. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.